a question for Trevor. Thanks. Trev, um, just wanted to know some of the tougher situations in your own career where your back's been up against the wall and how you might be able to deliver that to this team as you sort of pep them up tonight. Well, I think there's been many of those occasions, you know, for the majority of the players from this team. All of us have grown up outside of the U.S., uh, in a lot of cases having to fight our way through the ranks to eventually make it to the PGA Tour. So we've all experienced some of that. Um, just got to keep fighting, man. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. We feel like we've played some pretty good golf, some solid golf, tee to green, particularly the last couple of days. But we have absolutely been out putted. There's no doubt about it. Uh, hats off to the Americans the way they have putted. It really has been impressive. I spent a lot of time today uh, with that final match and just looking at Billy Horshaw making about a 12 footer for birdie to tie on 16, Homer making about 10 footer on 17 to win and then backing it up after Pendrith makes that clutch birdie, Homer makes another one there. That's, that's impressive stuff from that uh, pairing to win that point and we feel like um, that's been the difference right now. So as you say, backs up against the wall uh, going to have to dig deep, but it's going to have to start with making some putts for sure. Uh, Christian was just in here before, and he said that like playing for the Shield is maybe more prevalent than it ever has been. It used to be maybe playing for nationalities or, or whatever, but w with the deficit so big, is, is there an element of maybe victory is going to be really tough, but we're at least playing for this new Shield, this new identity? We're absolutely playing for the shield, and I'm, I'm so proud to hear him say that. Uh, you know, that really has been our goal, is for young kids all over the world to grow up and fall in love with the game of golf and dream to play on this team. So, makes me extremely proud to hear someone like him say that, uh, coming from my home country in South Africa. But, uh, you know, I wasn't very good at math at school. I think there's still 20 points available to win. So we're going to fight. Thanks, Rex. Right. Rex, go ahead and then Shane. Davis, has anything happened over the last two days that's made you change your game plan at all and maybe specifically about maybe sitting Xander and Patrick after how they played the last two days? Um, no. The plan is to... Uh, as we said yesterday, the plan is to try to figure out who to sit out. You know, we got so many guys, so it's um, you know spreading it around a little bit. I think you've seen it in what we've done. You know, last five or six teams is we don't just hide people or or make make a guy sit out two days in a row or all day in the Ryder Cup. So it's it's mixing and matching and making sure everybody gets in the game and um, keeps some momentum going. But we have really, 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 really simple goals. It's like put the four best alternate shot teams we can out tomorrow and then put the four best best ball teams we can out in the afternoon and try to win every session. And, you know, we're just blessed with a whole lot of good players. And we have guys that say, hey, I'll sit out in the morning and we'll let those guys go play. We have no selfishness. Nobody's mad to sit out. I mean, you can imagine having conversations with Billy Horschel all week about, by the way, um, <laughs> you're not going to play on Thursday. And make him wait another day to play and then watch the you know, exuberance of him. You know, he hung in there great today and Max made a couple great putts at the end. And that really wasn't the plan, you know, it was for, for Billy and, and Max to play together. So, um, we have a we have a good group and a, and a great plan and you know we'll come back tomorrow afternoon with the other guys that, that set out and a few others you know to round it out all right shane and then alex um question for both captains uh and i ask this with respect and i know it's not your foremost thing that you're thinking about right now this has been a lopsided historically event america was the big favorite coming in and now we have an eight to two score heading into the weekend the fact that it is such a lopsided margin, I, I'm just curious for your perspective on what that means for the perception of the event. Well, we're, we say this when we're, we're behind too. Trevor's right. There's a whole lot of points left. 
And we're not sitting in there going, oh, yeah, okay, this is great. No, we're trying to put four really good teams out tomorrow. We've seen a lot of, um, a lot of big leads lost. So we're, we're going to, just like his team, we're going to be try to be motivated to play tomorrow and, and not really talk about the outcome till the end. But to his point earlier, we've gotten a, a, some gifts from their team that have ribbon with the shield on it and all kinds of stuff with the shield on it. And I thought about it last night that Carmenita and and Trevor and Ernie and Liesel have done an incredible job making an identity because I started thinking everything we have has a flag on it, right? And it didn't hit me until the gift last night with all the ribbon on it. I said, she even made ribbon with the shields on it. And then they came out with those shirts today. So yeah, we're, we're thinking about protecting our flag and they're thinking about protecting their shield. And this is, it's far from over. And we, we both know that we both have to say something different to our teams tonight, but they're still going to want to play the rest of the weekend. The score means we've got to get better, and we will. Plain and simple. All right, Alex, just right here. Yeah, Trevor, so, I mean, you weren't there probably when Ben Crenshaw talked about what he was talking about in 99, but this seems to be a little different situation. First of all, how do you find a way to get the pairings you want, because you've now seen two days of your team not play as well as you'd like them to play, certainly not putt as well as you'd like them to putt, yet you have to find a way to get four guy or four groups out there. How hard is that to try to find a, those four groups, first of all? And then second, what is your message, and how is your message different than it was last night? Well, all of the hard work was done in preparation, creating the partnerships and doing that kind of work behind the scenes understanding what we thought would work best. And so we, we run the system that we run, and we just got to hope that the guys perform better when they get to the greens. And that's just for us where it's been separated right now. As far as me saying something to my team, you know, I don't need to say much, Alex. I don't need to say much. These guys are, these guys are hungry and motivated. The score line may make you think differently, but these guys are hungry and motivated, man. They want to be here. They want to compete. It's uh, not, not much needs to be said. Inside our locker room is a, is a great place to be. It's a great place to be. We have got an incredible group here, and I'm talking about not just players. I'm talking about our spouses and partners. I'm talking about the caddies. I'm talking about our backroom staff. Uh, we have an incredible group here, and we have had a blast from the minute we touched down in this great city. Would we like the score to be a little closer right now? Absolutely. But there's two days left. We'll be, we'll be playing as hard as you can play. Promise. We have time for a couple more. We'll do Adam and then Mark. Davis, after the way that Max kind of hounded you for the past year about getting on the team, what did you make of the way he uh, came through? came through this afternoon no surprise um he's been playing great um he's gotten some great wins um he described to me this morning at breakfast his whole sunday round at fortinet and and what he told me um impressed me so much that i'm gonna have him tell the whole story over again to to my son so i can hear it again but um no, it's no surprise. Um, actually, Drew followed them around today, um, drove the cart um, in our group, and he said every time he needed to hit a good shot, he hit a good shot. Every time he needed to make a putt, he made the putt. And um, that's what he did last week and last year in Napa, and he's a strong player. But he plays with a lot of passion, and he, like Trevor said, he's a great guy, great human being, as he says. All right, we'll just finish with Mark. Trevor, what did, I hate to ask, but what did you make of Greg Norman's well wishes on, tw on Twitter? Uh, look, any of you that have known me for the longest time know that I'm an extremely open and honest person. I pretty much say it exactly as I'm thinking it. And um, what I said was exactly what I was doing when I read that tweet. <laughs> I was laughing out loud. So... I, I learned long ago that lying is dangerous because you've got to have a good memory, so rather just tell the truth. 
All right. With that, gentlemen, thank you for the time and best of luck. I'm going to have to go look at my Twitter. <laughs>